While visiting the Benedictine monks of Norcia, in the initial days of Populus Sumorum Pontificum, uh, an earthquake struck as you vested for Mass. Uh, Father Boyle of Portland offered Mass in the crypt of the Basilica, and uh, as the ground shook, he took shelter under the altar. Um, could you sum up your experience and that of the pilgrims in Norcia, and uh, despite the fright, what fruits emerged? Yeah. Yes, that was, that was quite an experience uh, for, for all of the pilgrims that were there in Norcia at the time, and, and uh, certainly myself and Father Boyle from, from my own archdiocese. Um, it was very interesting because I was going to be celebrating the extraordinary form uh, of the liturgy there with a small group of the monks at Norch. I had not yet celebrated Mass that day. And we were in sort of a, a temporary uh, wooden uh, structure that the monks had put up after the first earthquake back in August. And so I had just begun vesting for Mass and literally had just placed the amice on my head and said the prayer that goes with the, uh, the vesting with the amice, which speaks about you know, placing on, on, on my head the, the helmet of salvation to repel uh, diabolical assaults. I had no sooner finished the prayer when bang, the, the earthquake hit and the whole building uh, began to shake. Um, so it was, it was, I've never been in an earthquake before and it was quite frightening. In fact, I turned and I asked the monks, you know, was that an aftershock? <laughs> and they laughed and said, no, Archbishop, that was the real thing. That was an earthquake. And I, I just thought it was a little alarming that, uh, you know, I had just uh, prayed for being protected against the assaults of the evil one and then, uh, you know, an earthquake hits. So I, it was very frightening, I think, for all of us. We were all very unnerved um, for the rest of that night. Uh, there was another earthquake that, that hit later that night, a couple hours later, and then throughout the night there were aftershocks. I, I think many of us were very happy to, to get out of that, that region of Italy and get uh, back to Rome, but even the, the huge earthquake which hit on Sunday in Rome that collapsed the Basilica of St. Benedict uh, in Norcia, uh, we felt that one even, even in Rome. It woke me uh, from sleep in Rome. So I think that, um, you know, as, as frightening as it was, I think that it, it, it added in some strange way to the spiritual experience of the pilgrimage. Um, you know, a, a pilgrimage is supposed to be filled with hardships. You know, a pilgrimage is not a, a, a tourist vacation. You know, we are pilgrims. And uh, the hardship of a pilgrimage, you know, adds to the experience, the spiritual experience. Um, and I think for many of us, um, you know, maybe we put our own spiritual interpretations on, on why these earthquakes at this particular time. I think some people uh, sort of came to a conclusion that, you know, the evil one probably doesn't like very much what we're doing right now. Uh, and uh, not that uh, the evil one plans his, uh, his, his assaults, if you will, around, you know, what, what we would be doing in, in Italy at that time. But I think most of the pilgrims were able to somehow in, interiorize that experience and it, it became a, um, a something for contemplation, I think, for many of the pilgrims as to what does this mean and, and why now and, and what does it mean for the world now, you know, that, you know, here we have the, uh, uh, the birthplace of St. Benedict. And, and we know that, that Benedict and the monastic movement is much what uh, preserved the, um, uh, the, the, the church and the faith of the church during the Dark Ages and during difficult times. So you know, why not hit at the heart of, of that, the birthplace of, of Benedict, you know, in a time when many are feeling the need also to, to preserve uh, the faith of the church in, in challenging and difficult times. Oh.